Today, let's go over how to set up, calibrate, and make sure your M1 is getting as accurate cuts as possible. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is make sure our M1 is snapped on the correct position. So again, to close the clamp of the M1, we're gonna squeeze the handle until the piece comes down there and it's locked in place with it. So showing that in full motion over here, gonna make sure we have a nice spot on the fence, squeeze down, lock in place. Once the M1 is locked in place, we're gonna enter calibration mode by selecting these two buttons and clicking and releasing the power button once. You'll see the cal on the screen and we're ready to start the calibration process. Okay, so to start with the calibration, we have a nice smooth piece of wood that we'll be using to calibrate with it. Again, our piece of material doesn't really matter as long as it's of the same type that we're gonna be generally cutting with it. So to start off, we're gonna drop the wheel down, touch off very lightly on the edge of the saw blade here. So again, I'll switch the camera so we can see that a little bit better. So all we want to do is lightly touch off. So you can hear that sound. We're just touching off on the edge. You could certainly start with a cut as well, but you don't need to. As long as the left side of the saw blade is lined up with the edge of the piece, we're ready to start to the next step. Okay, once we have that, we're going to go ahead here, hit the zero button, and now we're going to move six feet. So if I was using metric, I would hit this again and go two meters. But since we have an English tape measure, we'll go in feet and start the process. And again, we want to move very smoothly. So again, it doesn't have a speed limitation, but we want to make sure we're going very smoothly. We're pushing up against the back of the fence and make sure we're moving in very fluid motions here. So now we want to make a mark at our six foot mark. I like to do it once I've already started the calibration process, but you can certainly do it beforehand as well. Make a nice mark over there and that'll be our reference point. Now we're gonna bring that mark so that it's aligned directly with the left side of the saw blade. So I'm gonna drop the saw blade here. Again, no cutting is needed. If I have a sliding one, even easier. If you have a light guide, a laser, you can use that as well. And what I wanna do is make sure that the left outermost edge of the carbide tooth is lined up with the edge there. So I'll zoom in on this so we can see it a little better. All right, so you can see the mark. You can see my tooth right here, getting it nice in line with it. Boom, done. Once that's lined up, I head back over to the M1. Going to complete the calibration process. So now you see the screen will show 72 inches, which is where I am at the end of the board, and we'll go ahead and check that in the subsequent measurement. So now that my M1 is calibrated, I want to go ahead and add in the blade offset. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the arm. The arm will lock into place and hold down the middle blade offset button. So what this is going to do is account for a blade width to make sure that all of our cuts are accurate. So again, to get the blade width, we can measure the kerf on the blade or read it from the side, depending on what saw blade we have. This one, as well as many in the US, is going to be 3 30 seconds of an inch, but like before, I can switch to whatever units I want, whether that's millimeters, inches fractional, inches decimal, or anything in between with it. So once I have this set up, I'm going to hit the zero button, and now any measurement I reset it, it's going to go to negative 3 30 seconds of an inch to restart the count and make sure it's accounted for properly. All right, so now let's do our first cut and check the accuracy of it. So I'm gonna go ahead, again, I can touch off on the edge of my saw blade or start with a cut. Here, because we have a nice clean edge, we'll start with a cut. I'm gonna hit the zero button. You'll notice, again, we'll go to negative 330 seconds. And the other thing I wanna point out is little, this little X up here. So what this X is doing is showing if we're slightly above or slightly below the fraction displayed on it. So again, you'll only have this in fractional mode. If I'm in inches decimal mode, you have the full resolution on it. But on here, because we're in a fraction, mode we have the X to show if you're a little bit shy or a little bit proud of the surface with it. So the X marks a spot to show you're dead on the measurement versus the arrow pointing this way means I want to go that way to hit directly on the mark or if the arrow is showing the other way I need to go to the right to hit the mark with it. So you just have that extra feature, don't need it but it gives you that extra level of accuracy if wanted. Let's make a cut for 30 inches. So all I'm going to do is slide the material. Again, no speed limit on this, just nice steady smooth motion pushed up against the back of the fence and once we're at 30 inches, we'll make our cut and turn on the vacuum. Not necessarily in that order. All right, X marks the spot, 30 inches, turn on the vacuum. Let's check the measurement. Boom, 30 inches on the dot. So now that we did an accuracy check, let's do a repeatability check and make four pieces five inches each. Let's go. All right, let's stack all the pieces right here and you can see, nice and repeatable, easy to get repeat cuts without having to set up a hard stop system.
So now wrapping this all up, the M1 is a great tool for making repeat cuts where speed is important. Again, it's not going to be the best tool for everything you need on a miter saw, but if you're doing repeat cuts and trying to crank them out quickly, the M1 is extremely easy to use, portable, inexpensive, and a fast way to make your cuts done and get onto the job.